Imagine your object data is all over the place, literally. You've got object stores in all corners of the planet, edge locations, core data centers, and that's a problem because you want a single consolidated view of all that data, and you want it to be easy. Or maybe all you want to do is scale your object storage to the dizzy heights of hundreds of petabytes. If either of these scenarios resonates, you're in the right place. Hey, I'm Steve, and I'm going to show you an exciting new feature that landed with Nutanix Objects 4.0 called Federation. So what does it do? In essence, two things. First of all, it simplifies access to geographically distributed object data. And secondly, it raises the roof on object storage scalability exponentially. How does it do this? Well, at its heart, Federation is a global object namespace that's layered across multiple Nutanix object stores. And when I say multiple, there could be north of 100 object stores in a single federation. And of course, those object stores could be located anywhere. Let's go ahead and take a look at Federation in action. Alrighty, here we are in Prism Central, and if you haven't caught a Tech Bytes in a while, you'll notice that the layout of the interface has changed, and it's now super easy to go straight to the Objects Manager page. Once that loads up, we head straight to the Federated Namespaces section, and actually what we're going to do first is create a Federated Namespace. So we need to give it a name, specify the domain that it will belong to, and then we add object stores into the Federation. We refer to these as Federation members. Next, we choose a subset of members to serve as core members. Now, these are just members with added responsibilities. It's the core members that between them maintain and manage the Federation namespace. So you can have one, but better to have at least three for fault tolerance. Once we hit the setup button, away it goes. And I've sped this up, but it took about a minute. Now we're actually going to look at an existing federation that already has buckets and data. Let's explore the makeup of this federation. We see it has three members, and they all happen to be core members as well. And each is hosting a single bucket, so there are a total of three buckets in this federated namespace. Note also the location column on the right. This shows the Prism Central, or PC, to which each object store belongs. There are two PCs in the mix here. And it's absolutely fine for members to be spread across multiple PCs. In fact, that's likely to be the case in geo-distributed environments. Last point here, all the members' public IP addresses should be added to the Federation name in DNS. So any member can respond to lookups of the Federation namespace. OK, let's look at things from an object store perspective now. We'll go to object store 4. If we go to look at the bucket listing, we see different tabs. Now, the tab selected by default represents the local namespace. But because this object store is a member of not one but two federations, yep, multiple simultaneous memberships are possible, we can also see tabs for each of those federations. Now, if we click on Federation 1, we can see that this object store is hosting a single bucket in that federation. And if we hit the Launch Objects Browser button, this will take us straight to the Objects Browser, where we can see the full contents of the namespace. Note the format of the URL. You can use this format to access a particular federation via a specific member. So you can see namespace equals federation1 at the end of the string in this example. Let's enter our access key and secret key. And we can then see not just the bucket hosted on Object Store 4, but all three buckets in the Federation namespace, all in a single view. And if we create a bucket in the Federated namespace using Objects Browser, like so, then we know that this new Federation bucket will be hosted on this particular object store. OK, let's go ahead and check the bucket count in the Federated namespace view. We know Object Store 4 was previously hosting just one bucket in the Federation, but now you can see that it's updated to two. Let's take a look at scaling the Federation. This is easy peasy. Just specify which Object Store you'd like to add as a new member, and that's actually all there is to it. We now have four members in our Federation. 
The last thing I want to show you is setting up replication between Federation buckets to achieve fault tolerance within the namespace. So back in Object Store 4, let's choose the bucket we want to protect and set up a replication rule. Here we choose the namespace we wish to replicate to and there are options. We could replicate to or from a local namespace or another Federation namespace if we wanted, say for migration purposes, but we're going to keep it within Federation 1. So I'm going to specify a target bucket that I know is in a different location and save that. And the replication rule is now in effect. Now that's all pretty straightforward, I'm sure you'll agree. And just think of the alternative, laboriously setting up a multitude of individual endpoint connections. And even then, you still end up with a bunch of individual namespaces that'll all have to be independently managed. Nightmare. But the really exciting bit is that this is just step one on a much larger journey. We plan to add more intelligence to the Federation feature over the next few releases, addressing more use cases and further simplifying data management in geo-distributed environments. So stay tuned. Check out our other videos on Nutanix Unified Storage, and if you'd like to keep up to date with the very latest on Nutanix files and objects, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Have a good one.